Hi, my name is Enos Salam and today I'll be going to do this lab tutorial. This tutorial will be about arrays. Let's start with the basic rules for arrays. Arrays are made of either controls or indicators. They are made of the same data type. Each element in an array has an index value. In LabVIEW, the array index is zero based so the index of the first element is zero. And it is not possible to have an array of arrays. Dimensions of arrays. The dimensions of the arrays range from one dimensional array to n dimensional arrays. One dimensional arrays are like the ones you see in the right side of the screen and they are only conformed by elements in one row. Two dimensional arrays have both columns and rows. The index of arrays. As you can see on the screen, the first element will be zero the second one will be 1, the third one will be 2, fourth one will be 3, and the fifth one will be 4. So the in index of the nth element would be n minus 1. Accessing values of an array. If the array has only one dimension, you can access this value if the index is known. But if the array has more than one dimension, you cannot access one value directly. If the array is a two-dimensional array, for example, the first step would be access the row or column in which the value is located and then access the value at the same way is done with a one-dimensional array. Let's now look at some examples. Let's start by creating an array. You go to Array Matrix and Clusters, click Array, and then you have a space for you to add any data type. It cannot be an array. So let's start by adding a slice switch. We we'll resize it to get more index values but only will be available if you give a value to the last element. For example, if I hit this one all the values to the left will be available but not the ones to the right. So if I want to make all of them available I click the last one. If you want to add a dimension you right click and click on add dimension you resize it to the bottom to get more elements it could be also resize it upwards if you want to make elements available you have to give a value to any element in that row but only the ones that are above it will have also a value so you have to do the same thing with the values that are below it If you want to delete the data type but not the array itself, you would click one element and delete it. Let's now add a numeric data type. We do the same thing, we resize it and we add an element to the last index. We have 100, we have 8, same thing. This element is zero indexed. This one would be one, two, three, four. If you want to change it to a constant indicator or control you can do that from in the block diagram. Like change the constant. You expand and then you see all your values. Now Let's see how we can access an index value of an array. Let's first create an array. We add a numeric constant. We expand it. And we give a value to the last element. So it will be 2, 4, 6, 3, Five, seven, nine, eight, and ten. 
let's use some of the array functions like array size which will give us the size of the array we're working with let's use also index array to get a value of the index specified we'll here create a control to specify the index add an indicator to see the value of the index that we're accessing so we run continuously the VI and we already know that the size of the array is 9 so it has 9 elements and it ranges from the index 0 to 8 so the first element would be 2, then 4, 6, 3, 5, 7, 9, 8, 10 and that would be it if you continue clicking you will get 0 since there are no more elements Let's start the BI and go again to the block diagram. Let's now use the replace array subset and the insert into array. We wear both nodes to the array and let's specify the index. We're going to specify the same index so we add a numeric constant. And let's use the third value, which is two. And the new value that will be inserted will be also two. And now let's create two indicators. So, in this, in the output array, you will replace the third element, which is 6, for a 2. And in the output array 2, there will be a, another value inserted after the number 4. So, for one would be 2, 4, 2, 6, 3, and so on, and for the other one, the 6 will be replaced by a 2. So let's resize this and run the VI. So now we have an array with 10, 10 elements and the other one would be with 9 elements. Whenever the 2 was inserted in the output array 2, the 6 moved to the right so it's now an index value one number higher. In the output array number one, the six disappeared, giving space to the number two. Let's now use the delete from array function. So we're going to delete everything to the right of this array starting in the fifth place so we'd have to access the array the index number four and we will delete two values Let's delete two values. We get the indicator with the new array. And we'll get an indicator with the deleted portion. Sorry.
so the 5 and the 7 that were right after 3 disappeared giving place to 9, 8 and 10 and we now have a array with two values in the which are the deleted portion and one with seven values you can also have another array such as initial array build array array subset max and min array reshape array sort 1d array and search 1d array let's look at build array With this, if you had, for example, numeric values, let's give a value to two, four, six. 8, 10, and 12. You will get an array of 6 values. Now, you can also use the build array to unite various, I mean, to unite several arrays. So we copy this array and then you can see let's use only two inputs. You can see that the wire is thicker as the array becomes larger. So for example if you see whenever you only have numeric values that the input is a really thin wire and it becomes bigger whenever you get an array of the output. Now if you use this inf same function the wire will become thicker. This will conclude this lab tutorial. Thank you for watching.